you are welcome to this lesson six, an introduction to the Epistle to the Hebrews, chapter seven. Most of the documents referred to in this lesson can be downloaded from hebrews.cura.download. This chapter explains the similarities between the ancient mystical figure of Melchizedek and the Lord Jesus Christ, who, risen from the dead, has become our great high priest in the heavens. We recommend that you read chapter 7 before you proceed with this lesson. Verse 25 of this chapter is one of the most famous amongst Christians, where we read that Jesus is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. The epistle to the Hebrews was composed in Koine Greek in the third quarter of the first century CE. The text has been well preserved across 19 centuries. Nevertheless, certain ancient copies do contain a few modifications made by copyists. For example, in verse 6, a few ancient manuscripts replace the perfect tense has blessed with the simple past tense. In verse 13, a few ancient manuscripts replace the perfect tense servid with the simple past tense. In verse 17, a few manuscripts replace the passive verb it has witnessed with the active verb it witnesses. And in verse 28, a few manuscripts replace the verb offer up, anafero, with offer forth, prospero. You can find a dozen or more such variant readings at the website. None of them, however, affects the meaning or the interpretation of the chapter. We recommend that you download the document titled Vocabulary and preview some of the definitions from the Bauer, Danker, Arndt and Gengrich Greek-English lexicon. For example, in verse 10, the term loins to be someone's son or descendant, and the term order as in after the order of Melchizedek. The term seems to mean the way in which the book of Hebrews understands Psalm 110 verse 4 which the author interprets to mean that Jesus was a high priest according to the nature of or just as Melchizedek was. In verse 25, there is an ambiguity for English translators, for the term translated uttermost or completely can mean either pertaining to, pertaining to meeting a very high standard of quality or completeness, translated completely. The ancient Armenian version understands this verse in this sense. Or it could be translated unlimited duration of time, forever, or for all time. The verse is understood in this sense by the ancient Vulgate, Syriac, and Coptic versions of the New Testament, and by many modern translations and interpreters. An important point of grammar concerns the concept of semantic field, by which many different words and phrases can refer essentially to the same thing. The semantic field of Holy Scripture, or the Word of God in this chapter, is called a change in law, or Moses said, legal requirements, it is witnessed, a former commandment, the law itself, or the one who said, meaning God, and even a better covenant, and the word of the oath. All of these refer to the authority of the Hebrew Bible. As with most scripture, this chapter has an historical background. Early in the second millennium, before Jesus Christ, Melchizedek, a Canaanite, was already a priest serving the Most High, that is, 
the God who had given promises to Abraham. Melchizedek came out and met Abraham, blessed him, and Abraham paid to him a tithe of all the spoils he had taken after a battle with robber kings. Then, late in the second millennium BCE, the prophet Moses established a priesthood for Israel that was limited to the descendants of Aaron, all of whom, through the centuries, died. In the early first millennium BCE, King David uttered Psalm 110, in which he predicted that another priest would arise similar to Melchizedek, who would remain a priest forever. And then, in the early first millennium CE, Jesus offered himself as the final sacrifice to God and remains a priest forever. Thus we have a situation in which, in ancient times, Melchizedek was a priest of God. Some centuries later, a priesthood limited to the descendants of Aaron was established. But in the midst of that, King David uttered the Psalm 110 verse 4, in which God announced that another priest would come who was similar to Melchizedek, not belonging to Aaron's priesthood. And then, according to Hebrews 7.24, Jesus fulfilled that prediction, and shortly thereafter, the Aaronic priesthood ceased to function with the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple of God in A.D. 70, or 70 CE. We recommend that you develop an outline of the passage, or borrow the one we offer here. As to the discourse of the entire epistles, this chapter places us under the second main division proposed by Dr. Westfall in her discourse analysis of the epistle to the Hebrews. The first section exhorted us to consider Jesus as the apostle of our confession. And then the second main point, we are to consider Jesus as the high priest of our confession that is, the one whom we confess. After exhorting us to press on to maturity with the new teaching about Jesus' priesthood, we learned that the new teaching results in direct access to God. So in the third section, we are urged to draw near to God. Chapter 7 contains its own tight logic, developing the thesis of chapter 6, verse 20, to wit, Jesus is a priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Verses 1 through 3 offered an explanation of this when it read, For Melchizedek was a priest of the Most High God, resembling the Son of God. And in defense of that explanation, our chapter supplements that thought with the observation that Melchizedek received tithes from Abraham. That, along with the fact that Melchizedek blessed Abraham, made Melchizedek out to be superior to the founding ancestor of Israel. And then that Melchizedek also received tithes from Abraham's descendant Levi, the tribe which became the Aaronic priesthood. And thus, because of the prediction made by David, there was a need for another priest in the order of Melchizedek. Now, this is explained further in our chapter by the following observations. For a change of law has occurred, as was foretold, that is, when David witnessed to this fact in Psalm 110. As a further explanation, a better hope is introduced, because this one came with an oath which was not true of the Levitical priesthood, when Psalm 110 said that, I have sworn with an oath and will not change my mind. Thus, we observe that Jesus lives forever, saving those who draw near to God through him. For we have a holy priest who offered himself up once for all, with a further explanation that the oath appoints the Son 
who has been made perfect forever. As you teach or preach through this passage, we recommend that you underscore certain historical Christian doctrines that have their basis in this book, along with other New Testament scriptures. Your assignment is to read through Hebrews chapter 7 once a day this week in different translations. As you do so, jot down notes and queries that you want to discuss in your Bible study group. As a further learning experience, we recommend that you choose one of the following or some other topic of interest to you and draw up a chart, for example, showing all the traits describing Melchizedek from Genesis 14, Psalm 110, and Hebrews chapter 7. Or perhaps a chart comparing Melchizedek with Jesus. Or a history of the different priesthoods that appear in the Bible. You will find a sample document of this history at the website. May God bless you richly as you read, you study, you prepare, and you teach others in turn.